digging deep into this um, very short epistle, only four chapters. And uh, last week when I came to verse 16, I said, you know, I have to dedicate a full sermon on this one. You're laughing there, Diana. You thought, yep, that's exactly what he's going to do. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. I'm going to concentrate my message on those nine words, but let's get the full idea. In all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, this, we've been digging deep into this book, into this uh, epistle. I'm not sure how the whole body of the church feels about uh, the messages that have been brought, but Lord, I thank you because you have truly blessed me, Lord, as I had to prepare from this epistle. But we come now to another point, another heartbeat, another point where if we apply this, then there will be wonderful consequences. This is not, not an isolated verse. We see that Paul is giving us a command. And uh, if we follow, then uh, there will be wonderful Christian experiences, true worship, growth, proper service. Uh, it will affect our home life. It will affect our church life. It will affect our work life, our worship life. Every area of our life will be affected by it. So, Lord, I pray that this afternoon, as we look at these nine words, we'll be able to understand how we may let the word dwell richly in our heart. For I think we all have the desire, but when it comes to putting it in practice, then we find that reality is very different. I pray that you will guide me, Lord, help my mind uh, stay set in thinking in English and my words be able to express um, those things that you have given me through the week. Let, I, let all of us, Lord, understand what it is to let the word uh, dwell richly inside of us. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know how it is in your respective countries, but when we come to Christmas here, uh, it seems like everybody you, you come across, they all say the same thing. Feliz Navidad y Prospero Año Nuevo. And then when you get a little bit more uh, personal, they say, well, you know, as long as we have good health, that's what really matters. You know, I, I don't know how it is where you live, but it seems like it's almost a, a cliche. It becomes very repetitive. And although we desire to have good health, you wonder, you know, how come so many people have bad health? Um, this afternoon I was having lunch with a couple of brothers that are visiting us from the States. And uh, we were talking about, you know, having good health. And he said, Sammy, how is your health? I said, you know, I really praise the Lord. I'm going to turn 67 in just a month or so, in October. And praise to him, I have good health. Every time I go to the doctor, he gives me a good report. He only complains about my weight is that if you lose two, uh, tell 10 kilos, then it, you, know, you couldn't ask for anything better. And I, I try it every year. Uh, and uh, I'm doing pretty good. I start with 100, I end up with 103. I'm doing very good. Why is it that we have sometimes bad health? Well, it could be the genes. It could be bad habits. It could be bad hobbies. It could be accidents that we go through, maybe a bad environment that we live, it could be, you know, if you live in big cities, smog, uh, uh, chemicals, and so on. And, and sometimes bad health comes because of bad choices in life, bad diets, uh, or ignorance, uh, living a life of, being a, living an irresponsible life. I think we all want good health, don't we? But you know, when we come to spiritual health, we find that so many Christians today are, don't have good spiritual health. And so as we come to this verse, in verse 16, we come to probably one of the most neglected commands 
we are told very clearly to let the word of Christ dwell richly inside of us. But I wonder how many of us would take this and say, okay, I need to make this my daily diet. And I need to understand how it works. I want to be spiritually healthy. And later on in this message, we're going to see the benefits of being spiritually healthy. Uh, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, it starts off with the word let. Three words that caught my attention while I was working on this, and that's let, dwell, and richly. And we'll look into that in a minute. But in order to give an outline, I have three questions for us. What does this mean? I mean, most of you, if you've been saved for some time, you, you've probably read this uh, more than a dozen times. And uh, sometimes now when we read it, we might go, oh, oh, yeah, thank you very much. Let's move on to the next passage. But what, why, why is this in the middle of Colossians? And then what comes after this? Because if we do this, Paul says there's going to be wonderful consequences. There's going to be an effect. So first we need to understand, first of all, what does it mean? Or how is this done? Then the next question I'd like to ask and try to answer is, why is it so important? If we understand why it's important, then maybe we will take this more seriously. And then understanding that this is a command, the, the question here now comes, how do we obey it? How do we obey it? We must understand that the Word of God is, must be central. We, the Lord has given us two things. I'll be covering some of that this afternoon. That is, be filled with the Holy Spirit and be filled with the Word. Ephesians 5.18 and Colossians 3.16. And then the effects of each one are basically mirrored. They're, 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 they're the same. So, um, remember we, we, we left last, I think it was last week, we, we went through uh, uh, this put on and put off uh, section. And Paul is asking us to take that very seriously, to dress new clothes, uh, clothes that would identify us with the Lord Jesus Christ. But now he comes to a stop and says, but watch out, this is how it's done. In order for you to be able to do that, you need to understand some things. And that is, we need to let, we need a new intake. So, first question, how is this done? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. The word there for word is logos. Christ gives us in his word what we need uh, to live Christly. Christ is the living word. Remember John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the word, and the word was, good. that's the word logos. And the word was with God, and the word was God. And then in verse 14, and the word was made flesh. The word there is logos all the time. And the parallel passage that I mentioned before, Ephesians 5.18, it tells us the same, but in this case, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let him have more space in your life. And, and if, we have, if we give him more space, it will show there will be consequences. And the idea here is not a becoming filled once and for all. It is be ye being filled. It is a continual thing. It's a continual process. Now, how many of you remember when you were kids? Some of you do. How many of you did a show and tell in class? That's too old? Well, we did a show and tell. Uh, maybe on a Friday, the teacher would say, okay, tomorrow show and tell. You just bring something that's important, bring it to class, and then you explain it. And I would bring my things that I would understand to be important. I remember, I'm going to give you one of those illustrations in a minute. Well, thinking about that, I said, what, what don't we do as show and tell in church? You know what this is? This is a um, solar light. This, uh, right now, if you see, it's not uh, lighting up any. And the only way it'll light up is if the, the sun is exposed to the cells here and it charges the battery long enough. And then when the, it has a sensor so that when the dark comes in, it'll activate the sensor and the, it'll start uh, feeding from the battery. It will feed uh, and it'll give you light all night. I've noticed that some of my lights, I have about 15 on the balcony, some of them light up for an hour and some of them light up all night. 
And of course, I'm very curious because they're all the same. And I, you know, I try to do something about so that they all sh uh, light up all night. But you know, I, I'm not too good with electronics, but I understand that if the battery is not charging well, if it doesn't have enough charge, it's not going to give you light. If it's not being exposed to the light and feeding from the light continuously, it's just not going to give you light. So the idea here is be exposed to the word long enough and well enough so that we are charged so that we can give the kind of light that Christ wants us to give. Now, I found that before I understood any of that, I, I found that on cloudy days, the, the, uh, it would probably maybe have a five minute charge and as soon as the, light, the, the dark come, would come in, it would light up and I said, well, good. And then five minutes later, it's gone. I said, what happened? Uh, maybe it's the batteries. No, there was nothing wrong with the, 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 the mechanics of it. The problem was it, was it just simply wasn't getting enough exposure to the light. And so the idea here that Paul is giving us, I think it's uh, when he says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, it would be like us being exposed to the word long enough, continuously enough, sucking away from it, uh, digesting it, welcoming uh, the word of God in our life so that we will have the performance that Paul tells us there later on in verses 17 and on. Let it dwell in you richly, he says. Uh, so we need to understand that the Bible reveals God's mind to us and the Holy Spirit illumines our minds to understand it. We need to expose our spirit and our mind to God's source of energy continuously if we truly want to give the kind of light Paul asks us in the, in the following verses. If we don't do that, then we can't say, well, you know, it's just a circumstances. No, it's just that we haven't exposed ourselves long enough in the word. I find it very sad, you know, when I, I, haven't, account, I haven't encountered anybody like this be, uh, yet lately, but uh, some time ago, uh, you, I, I came across some individuals who would come to church maybe once a month, maybe once every three months, and then, you know, you, you meet them in the street, and you, want your, and you ask them, hey, how are you doing? Well, Pastor, I'm not doing very well. I said, uh, what's wrong? Well, I have this problem and that problem, blah, 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 blah. And they, they would tell you, you know, the problem with some people, when you ask them what's wrong, they'll tell you. <laughs> and they will tell you for an hour. And they will tell you what's wrong. And I said, well, uh, I don't understand. Are you spending time in the Word? Oh, I'm pastor, I'm just a weak Christian. And they'll go like this, you know, I'm just a weak Christian. And he was like, oh, it's just because of my circumstances. And, it, you know, I felt like getting a baseball bat, hitting them in the head and saying, what? you don't get it. The reason why you're weak is because you're not spending time in the Word. You're not spending time in the body with the body and listening to the Word. You're not spending time feeding. And so what happens if you don't eat? You become weak. So the situation with some individuals, some Christians, the reason why they're not, they don't have spiritual health is simply because they're neglecting the command here. Let it dwell we need to study that word, that word dwell. I was talking to Brother Tim the other day about this word. It only appears twice in the New Testament. It, is, it means, to, according to the dictionary, inhabit. It, it is to take up one's residence and to make one's home uh, inside, to give it, make it welcome, to prepare a place for it so it feels welcome. You can find a seat in, in our heart. And it gains emphasis with the word in you. The root word means to dwell in. The word has in as its prefix. Then the word in you follows it. So the command is Christ's spoken word, the Holy Spirit inspired word, the Holy Scriptures must be welcome to make up resonance inside of us. And again, it's not an option, it's a command. So when it comes, to, when it comes for us to practice this, what happens? We don't let it sometimes. We say, oh, maybe tomorrow. And we kind of do this, oh, you know, like if it didn't matter. I came across, I think I shared this with you, a lady who came to church for a while. They, she made a profession of faith. She came, she said, Pastor, I really want to serve the Lord. And I said, wonderful. And I, well, I was talking about the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And they said, oh, I want to discover my, my gifts so I can serve the Lord. And I said, you know, that's, I like that enthusiasm. 
And I said, just keep coming and keep feeding and uh, keep practicing what you learn. About two, three weeks later, she didn't come again. She didn't come at, at all. And so, you know, as uh, I'm, I become very concerned when that happens with people. I wonder, are they truly saved or not? So I keep sending them little notes, little messages to encourage them. And I, I found that sometimes maybe I'm pesado. You know what pesado is? I'm a little too heavy. I'm just too persistent. But, I, I, you know, if I, if I see somebody drowning, what do you do? You can't just let them drown if you, if you have the ability to do something. So I prefer to be too persistent than not be enough persistent. And, uh, so this lady would write me back to say, oh, pastor, you don't have to worry about me. I'm doing fine. I have the, heart, the Lord in a little corner of my heart. And that sounded so beautiful. But in my, in my understanding, I got, <clears throat> I think it was, I, I hope it was, it was a holy wrath. And, but I wrote her and I said, what do you think the Lord is like a flower pot? that you can just put in a little corner of the house to adorn a little corner so you can look at it and say, oh, it's wonderful. I said, you know, the, if the Lord is truly Lord in your life, it'll be in the center of everything. She didn't answer back. I have a way of burning people, I think. But, you know, the, this is the idea. We need to let it. We need to do something about it. Uh, it the word here, uh, it, it, when, it when he says, uh, uh, let the word... Um, uh, dwell richly, it means that we, we don't just go to the Bible and give it a, a simple glance and say, okay, let me pray now. I'll be, I'll be fine for the rest of the day. I've come across believers who uh, depend uh, on a pandiario, uh, um, uh, what do you call that in English? Uh, the little devotion. It's a little page. You kind of rip from the then. You have a little verse and then an application. And then, you, oh, well, now I can pray. And this is it. I'm, oh, I've had my devotion. Well, call it something else, but that's not devotion. You know, again, I get, I don't know. And we think maybe that's enough. That's not even a pill. That's not even a little crumb of bread. If you try to uh, live Christly, then, you know, that's not... That's not going to help. There needs to be an examination. Like, for example, a skin doctor, when he, when he sees some un, uh, uh, anomaly in the skin, Brother uh, Roy has gone to get some checkups on the skin. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he would be very thankful if the doctor said, okay, you're going to spend at least three hours today, make sure that we understand what's happening with you, and uh, so we can give you the proper medication. But imagine the doctor comes in and says, hi, Roy, let me, and start, you know, like they do here with the security. See, when you get a they start prescribing without even looking at your eyes. I wouldn't appreciate that kind of thing. At one time, the, I had a doctor like that. Uh, didn't even look it up. He said, uh, uh, the number, please. And so and so, and he went into the computer. Oh, your name is Josebio Pellet. Oh, yeah, okay. And, uh, yeah, yeah. oh, you were here last, about a year ago. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, well, what is it? What's wrong with you? Uh, well, uh, you know, I didn't speak more than five seconds. And he, uh, here, take this. And I was off. And I said, I'm not going to take that. Look at my eye. Look at me. You know, we're, uh, you know these things just grab me. I, I, when, I, when I see that kind of situation, you know, if you had a doctor that did this uh, with you, you would say, what's wrong with this doctor? He needs to examine. You need to do it diligently, closely, like a doctor would look into a microscope to see what's going on. Or maybe, this one is a little bit more funny, maybe like an 18-year-old girl who goes out for her first date. What happens with the mirror? She wants, she wants it out. And she spends uh, two or three hours just to make sure that that hair is right and this, you know, everything has to be just perfect just to make sure that when she comes and meets this young man, everything will be perfectly acceptable. You know, uh, my, uh, my, my son Adrian, he wasn't a girl, but he did the same thing. He would curl this, he would make that curve just right. And sometimes it would defy gravity, you know, it's just, uh, and I said, honey, what? you've been in there for an hour, what's wrong? Daddy, I just have to make sure that, you know, <laughs> everything's right. With me, it was just a <laughs> and go, and you, you'd be outside. You know, there's a, there's a beholding to do here. 
And James chapter 1, verse 22 gives us this, this word. Notice, let me read it for you. James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. But if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the mirror, in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth away, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was, but whose so look it into the perfect law of liberty and continue it therein, he being not a forgetter, uh, forgetful here, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed indeed. I love that word. Behold it. Kata noeho. Am I pronouncing that right, Brother uh, Tim? To observe fully, to behold, to consider, to discover, to perceive, according to the dictionary, strong state uh, concordance. No e i eho gives the idea of exercising the mind to comprehend, to heed, to perceive by thinking about it, to understand, to heed. So, are you ready for a show and tell? Now, most of you know that I grew up in Australia. I brought a little. You know what, a, what you know what I call what you call a boomerang that does not come back. It's a stick. <laughs> well, here's, here's a boomerang, and they ha they come in all shapes. I I think I was about 14 years old when I saw on television this Aborigines get this boomerang and boom throw, and it would just make a perfect circle. I mean, to the eye level, it's a perfect balance all the way through, a horizontal fl flight, and it would come to him and he go. And I was like, blown away. Wow. Damn it, I want a boomerang. And my dad got me a boomerang. And I uh, didn't know what boomerangs did. But you know, you know that what this is designed to do? It's designed to break bones. If you're an uh, emu, then it'll, it's designed to break your neck. If you're a kangaroo, either legs or your neck. If you're uh, you know, a swarm of uh, birds, It'll hit several, it'll come, it'll come down. They're designed to kill. They don't tell you that when you buy uh, the boomerang at the, at, the play, uh, you know, at the store. So since I had a wonderful um, uh, front, we lived in a farm and we had a beautiful paddock, a beautiful uh, um, uh, campo in front, a field, uh, perfect for learning how to fly the boomerang. I had no idea how to fly a boomerang and I threw it and it didn't come back. It just kept on flying further and further away. And so I ran after the boomerang. I, I did that about five times. I said, you know, I feel like a dog here chasing a stick. This is not what I saw on television. So I kept trying it again and again, and it just didn't fly. I got, in, I got fit, though, <laughs> and I ran a lot. And I said, you know, maybe, maybe it's got batteries somewhere. It doesn't, you know, maybe it needs some, some batteries. No, it didn't need batteries. And, and I tried this after school for several times, and it just didn't come back. And I was able, almost ready to give up. And, and, and then I realized, I was starting to behold the boomerang. I said, oh, it's interesting. It has kind of a, uh, aerona it's, it's got a, a um, um, how do you call it? Um, it's got an aerodynamic shape. It goes like this on one side and the other one here. And I said, oh, I see how this, yeah, I can see how this works. As it flies, it cuts just like a wing, and, and the shape of the boomerang will, will make it turn around. And, you know, and I threw it away, and I threw it, and it still didn't come back. So I obviously realized I was doing something wrong. Now, I'm giving you a long story, and I'll show you the application. About three or four weeks later, that stick just, it still did not come back. And I, then I said, OK, let me do some research. I went to the library, and I, and I realized what, was, what I was doing wrong. I was contemplating, I was uh, observing fully, I was beholding, I was considering, discovering, perceiving. I was doing all this. And then I realized that in order to have a boomerang come back, you have to have the right grip. You have to have the right grip. Okay, so it has the, the, the spin. You, can, you have this... Uh, flick on your, and you have to have the right height, and you have to have the right angle, and you have to have the wind uh, blowing just in the right place. Everything has to be in the right place. If you, any of those things miss, it will have maybe half a curve. I was trying everything. I was getting better at it, but still the boomerang did not fly back like the aborigines did. 
So I thought, I'm still missing something. I still need to study this boomerang a little bit more. I need to understand how this whole thing works. And then I realized that, you know, the, 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 even the strength that you apply, even the way you, I mean, everything, there's a, it is a calculated art. The, boom, the aborigines do this all the time. It's an instinctive, an instinctive uh, way of doing it. But for me, I had to learn. And then one day, when I had everything right, the wind was blowing on my cheek. I had the right height, the right angle, the right flick, the right strength, and the boomerang made a perfect circle. I mean, a beautiful circle. It was almost like slow motion. I was like, I can't believe it. And then he went after me and I said, now I have another problem. How do you catch this? <laughs> I realized then that you can have a broken finger. For a while I was going to school with the bruises in my arm. How do you catch something that, you know, that this comes with a big force, with a strong force? So I had to learn how to, uh, how to catch it. You know, there was a lot of beholding there. The, the, I had to really... It, it wasn't just a superficial study. You had to not only understand what you, you know, the, the, the mechanics, but you also have to practice it right. And only then will things start happening. And, you know, the day I was able to throw the boomerang strong enough and it made a long turn all the way around. And it came to me and I went, <laughs> and I didn't have anything broken. I said, wow, I can do this. Then I got into bigger boomerangs. You know what happens with, when you get bigger boomerangs? They're going to hurt more if you try to catch it and you don't catch it right. Again, they're designed to, to kill. They're designed to break something. But, you know, after I was able to do this, I didn't have to think about it anymore. It was just a boom. boom. Hey, brothers, come over. Let me show you. What, oh, that's good. I can do it too. It wouldn't fly back. And I said, what are you doing right? I said, you know, it took me uh, almost two months to get this, whole, this thing nailed down. He said, Pastor, what are you getting to? When the Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell richly in you, there has to be, first of all, a want to, a desire, let the word, and then richly, it's not, you know, you're not going to have, it, um, have its effect in you unless you know how to apply it. Like I said, a simple glance is not going uh, to do it. You need more than that. And so, then we have the word richly, plosius, plosiose, that's how you would uh, spell it, and it's an, an adjective, it means abundantly, this word modifies the quantity or extent of the dwelling. So, what made, for example, if I ask you ladies, uh, what makes a rich cherry cheesecake, Kathy? Just put a lot of cheese and a lot of cherries, right? Be a, you know, make sure you have the right ingredients. Uh, maybe you might, might want to put more sugar in it. I don't know. What makes a good, uh, uh, a good gold mine rich? What makes a gold mine rich? A lot of gold, right? You said, I have a, I'm a, you know, I'm, uh, you see plenty of gold everywhere. Well, what makes a happy marriage relationship rich? Well, an abundance of love and kindness, for example. What, then what will make the word of Christ dwell in us richly? Lots of time reading, studying, meditating, praying, and looking for ways to apply it. That's the only way it will bring the proper effects. It won't happen any other way. So what does this mean? Now the second question, why is letting the word dwell in us so important? Well, I can think of the first one. It's a command. We need to obey it. And again, this is an often neglect, neglected command. We simply brush it away. We think we're not sinning. But you know, the, the, this is a, the sin of omission. We have in consideration the sins of commission. But this one will, is a sin of omission that will bring you to commit a lot of sins of commission. And then, why is it so important? Because it provides benefits. Brother Tim chose a, a passage the, to read that I have in my list, but I would like you to look at the bulletin board. I made a list of these benefits. If I told you, you know, uh, it has five really good benefits, would you be encouraged to read, spend more time in the Word? 
You say, five? Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, what about 10? What about uh, 20? That's, that's 20 good reasons why we should get into the word more seriously. Well, what about 31? Would that be enough to motivate us? Now, I'm not going to have time to read all the passages because it will take us um, probably several hours, but I'm going to tell you the reasons why we should get more into the Word. I'm going to talk to you about uh, the possible benefits that, that could come from the Word. Number one, by reading the Bible, we will learn to fear God, obey Him, and do His will. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 7, 18 through 19. <coughs> You don't have to write this. I'll make a picture and send it to you on WhatsApp. Okay, I'll save you that time. Two, it will help us avoid sin. How about, how about that? Would that encourage us? Pastor, I, I'm very weak and I'm falling to sin so easily. Well, you know, get into the Word, and this will give you uh, power, give you energy to avoid sin. Psalm 1, 119, verse 11. Number three, Bible study enables Christ to answer our prayers positively. John chapter 15, verse 7. Number four, it will aid in giving us victory over Satan. First John chapter 2, verse 14. If obeyed, it will help us become more uh, prosperous and successful. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Med number six, meditating on the word will make us fruitful. Psalm 1, verses 2 and 3. Number seven, it will give us direction in life. Psalm 119, 105. Number eight, studying it would enable us to avoid shameful ignorance. You know, knowledge is expensive, but ignorance is more expensive. <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Number nine, it will teach us doctrine. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. It will reprove us when we do wrong. Second Timothy chapter 3, 16 also. Number 11, it will correct us to get us back on track. Same passage, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16. Chapter 3, uh, 16 of 2 Timothy also, it will instruct us in staying right with God. And then 2 Timothy chapter 3, 17, this is number 13, it will complete and equip us to serve. Number 14, Bible knowledge will increase our faith. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Number 15, reading the word will prompt Believing, Chap uh, John chapter 20, verses 20 to uh, 30 through 31. Number 16, studying the word, studying the Old Testament will admonish or warn us. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Number 17, studying the, the Old Testament will com comfort and give us hope. Romans 15, 4. Number 18, God promises to bless those who read the Bible. Revelations 1. Uh, verse chapter 1, verse 3. 19, obey God, God's word provides better chances to lengthen our lives and it will give us peace. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Number 20, it will discover wondrous things. Psalm 119, verse 18. Verse, number 21, God uses his word to clean us. Uh, Psalm 119, verse 9. Number 22, careful Bible study will enable us to discern between truth and error. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. You see where I'm going with this? I've only, I've only mentioned 22. I have 31 here, but that's only the beginning. There's so many more benefits. Are we convinced? You know, the only thing that made me go back to this dumb stick was one day seeing it fly and seeing it fly well. The second uh, thing I wanted to do with that stick was to kill a, a kangaroo or something, whatever was out there that moved. I never did any of that. But I was enjoying my, I was enjoying the experience. And you know, when you come to understand these benefits, you know what you want to do? You want the Word of God, you want to let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. That's the point. So, what does this mean? Second, why is letting the word dwell in us so important? And then third, how can we let the word of Christ dwell in us? That word let speaks about a, ch a choice. It, 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 it's uh, pointing towards a choice. We need to decide to do it. So, uh, James chapter 4, 8 says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Draw, it's, uh, I want to get closer to the Lord. So this is the way we do it. And uh, we will find that if we do this, 
it will become a sweet, it will become sweet to us, just like the psalmist. Psalm 119, 10, uh, 119, 103 says, How sweet are the words unto my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Have you ever experienced that? You know, when you're, you're really, maybe you're, you're searching for the Lord. You, there's something that you need. You don't know what it is. And you get into the Word. And you have this remar, this, uh, the Word from the Word. You have this, the Lord just connects with you. And, and shows you something in the, in the Word that speaks directly to your situation. And you fall back and you know that you realize that God has just spoken to you through His Word. And you sit back just like when you have a good steak. How do you, you do that too when you have a good steak? Coffee, please. I don't know if you do that. I, I, I like my food. I enjoy my food. But I wonder if we enjoy the Word of God that much. Sweet to my mouth, he says. To my taste. Mmm, delicious. <clears throat> Let me read this one for you, De Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 9, 18 through 19. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself that has heart turned not away, neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of the law, of this law, in a book out of that which is because the priests is because the priests and Levites. Now, pay attention to this last verse. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, and keep all the words of the law, of this law, and these statutes to do them. Turn your Bibles with me. I want you to come this, through this passage with me. I want you to see something here uh, that is Proverbs chapter 2 verse, verses uh, 1 through 5 Proverbs 2 there are several words I want you to pick out here my son if thou will receive my words notice the next verb and hide my commandments with thee so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and applying thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up the voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then, see the, the progress, if, 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 then, Verse 5, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Receive, hide, incline, apply, cry after, seek, search, all these words. And we need to do this diligently. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, so we spend time in the word. We let it, we make time, we, uh, we make a choice. This is going to be my diet from now on. I'm going to stick to it, and I'm going to make sure that I behold, that I, that I capture the richness of it. And then another important thing you need to meditate on. Psalm 1-2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Psalm 119, 97. Oh, how I love, oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all day. You know, when it sticks inside of you, what happens? And this is, and, and, and you know, singing psalms has the same effect. Have you been going down the street and maybe you're, uh, you're tatareando, I'm not sure how you say that in English. You're, you're kind of, uh, the words are coming out of your mouth. You're singing the song. And then the song ministers to you. You're going like, no, 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 you know. And, and then the, and you're, you're, you're saying the words, and then you stop for a minute, and it's, wow. And, and, and that captures your attention. And it's like God saying, are you, are you listening to what you're singing? 
And the same thing here. Are you listening to what you're reading? Are you paying attention? Are you letting this stick? Are you savoring this? You know, I hope when we sing these songs that we're, we have on the screen, it's not just like, uh, let's entertain ourselves. Let's just have a sweet time. I hope these words sink into our heart and come out of the soul up to the Lord. Sometimes these are words that we sing to minister to each other. Sometimes these are words that we have to discover God's richness. Sometimes it's, uh, uh, it's, it's describing an experience that we have. But all these are designed to give us a better understanding of who God is and give us a better re- help us develop a better relationship with God. Psalm 119, 147, My eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. So meditate. How many of us spend time meditating? You know what meditating is? Is when you, you study the word you, and it's in your mind, it's in your heart now, you're, and you're, 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 you're tasting it. You're chewing on it. And then how about memorizing it? You say, Pastor, I don't have good memory. Well, join the club. I, I'm losing my memory. But I realize that if I spend more time in the Word and meditate on it, it sticks more t- longer. Let me give you one psalm, and then I'll try to close. Psalm 119, 9 through 11. We, uh, wherewithal shall a young man clean his, his way? By taking heed, let it stick. Thereunto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let not wonder, let me not wander from thy commandments. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let not, again, see that word, let, let, let. Oh, let not wander from thy commandments. The word have I hid. In, you know what it, what it means to hide the word in your heart? You know, if there's no space in your heart for his word, you won't look for it. But if you treasure God's word, then you will hide it in your heart. And you know what happens when you hide it in your heart? It will come out. You cannot expect the, uh, the word to come out if it's not in you. I hid it in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You know, it's then when, when you're ready maybe to fall into temptation that the word that's been, that sticks in your soul now ministers to you. The Holy Spirit has a way of bringing that to remembrance. You know what memorizing is? It's hard, but it's very, very rewarding. So I tried to answer these questions. What does the phrase mean? Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you. I think we might understand how, that, how to answer that question. Why is letting the word dwell in us so important? I only gave you 20 reasons, but I'll, I'll leave a, uh, uh, a copy of these 31 reasons on the bulletin board so you can uh, check those verses personally. Maybe this week you can spend time checking each one of those verses to confirm what I'm saying. There's tremendous benefits from it. And then, for how can we let the Word of Christ dwell in us? Well, by reading it, by studying it, by beholding it. Remember the boomerang? Now, next time you get, get into the Word, you say, well, I wonder how I'm going to make this stick. You know, let it, let it uh, settle. Give it a, a good home in my heart. Well, it's gonna have, you're going to need, need practice. You need, you're going to need time. It's not going to be an easy thing. You need to read, you need to study, you need to meditate. Uh, You need to choose to change your ways to the ways that the Lord gives you. You know, change is not easy. It's not easy for me, it's not easy for anybody. The devil does not want change in you. He doesn't want change in me either. But the only thing that will bring change is, you know, do something else for me. This week, when you get into the Word, look into Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Read that and then launch into the following verses. You know what the benefits are going to be? You're going to have a stable home. How many of us don't want a stable home? You're going to have a better marriage, more balanced marriage. You're going to be able to make decisions that will benefit the whole family. You'll be able to produce better at work. Even if you have a, uh, you know, a, a stinking uh, job or a stinking boss, it'll give you the ability to do all things for the, for the glory of the Lord because you're going to have a different outlook towards that job. It's going to help us in every area of our life. In child uh, rearing, is that how you say it? Criar hijos? 
You know, every area, marriage, children, health, future, everything will be affected. Have I convinced anybody this afternoon? Some time ago, Brother Tim said something that caught my attention. These are not just pretty words. This is, as you would say, straight from the horse's mouth. Except it's not the horse's mouth, it's from the Holy Spirit. You might say, well, Pastor, what if I don't? You're only left with the old man to deal with. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to get you in trouble. Let's stand and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. I tried the best I could to give a better understanding of this verse, Colossians 6, uh, 3.16. I realize how many times I failed you. I can remember countless times where I thought it wouldn't matter if I skipped one day of Bible reading, Bible study, of a time of quiet devotion with you. And then I saw the effects of not spending time because I could see the old man getting stronger and uh, taking over. If we don't let the word of Christ dwell in us richly, the old man, the, the one that Paul speaks about in Romans 7, where he says, O oh, wretched man that I am, the, this body of death, he says, that old stinking man, that all of us have, that old uh, fallen nature will take over. And we've seen in Colossians 3 how clearly you tell us to put off those old ways, as if referring to clothes that are no good anymore. And you tell us so simply, put on these clothes. But it doesn't seem clear how to put on those clothes until we get to Verse 16, chapter 316, and you say, well, this is how it is. You need to be exposed to the sun. And I'm not talking about, of course, you're not talking about the S-U-N sun, but the S-O-N sun of God. When we spend time in the logos, when we spend time in the living logos, having fellowship with you, allowing the Holy Spirit to give us understanding what, how sweet that time is. And how different we behave in front of the uh, at this, uh, in front of the uh, uh, trouble, in front of uh, uh, trials. We we have a different outlook. We have a different uh, a, a different way of dealing with trouble. Oh Lord, I pray that we will spend more time in Your Word. I pray that uh, You will help us in making this choice because in this flesh that we have, there's nothing natural in us that would desire the word. It is only when we understand the command, and it's only when we un when understand the benefits that we will draw nigh to you and will seek to get drenched in your word, to let the word dwell in us. Oh Lord, help us. Help us to be better doers of the word and not just hearers of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Tim, would you please come?